If you're watching this video, you just bought an SNS Super E, the best carb on the planet or at least you bought a bike that's got a Super E already on there, and you wanna make sure that that thing is ready to go for riding season. Today, we're gonna to talk about the three most important factors to consider when setting up your s, &S carb. We're gonna talk about the jets, we're gonna talk about the float height, and then we'll talk about the factory settings that are gonna get you in the ballpark. Stick with me, I'll take you out to the carb now, we'll go through all of it, and most importantly, we are gonna make it easy. All right guys, so to start this out, I'm just gonna give you a quick what's what on this carburetor. First off, let's start with the fact that this is the front of the carburetor. This is the back side that is going toward the motor. So what you've got here is your accelerator pump adjustment screw. That's right up here. Over here, this is your idle mixture screw. This right here is gonna look a little different on yours. It'll just be a tiny little knob, but this is your enricher. It's what you use to get the bike started and down to make it run. This over here is your idle speed screw down in there. And right in here is where your pull cable for your throttle will go. And if you have a return cable, which you shouldn't if you're riding a chopper, because who needs a return cable, that would go in here. But on mine, this is probably gonna get cut off. Anyways, that's what's going on at the top. When we talk about factory settings, we'll be using this, that, and this section here to set your factory settings. Now, the bottom here, this is your float bowl, and at the bottom of the float bowl, you've got your float bowl drain screw. We'll show you a little more on this in a second. This right here is your gas inlet. On my carb, I did a rebuild kit, so this thing is movable, but yours might be in a fixed position. And then down here, you've got the cover for your accelerator pump. Now, for this basic video, we're not gonna have to take this off. What I've done on the bottom is I've colored in blue all of the screws that you need to remove in order to remove your float bowl. So we'll show you first how this comes out, show you what's underneath, and then we'll take the float bowl off and show you where the jets are at. Okay, so the float bowl drain plug down here, this is a 5 8 drain plug. So you're just gonna pop a wrench onto this guy, give it a twist, and we're gonna pop the drain plug out of the bottom. Now you don't have to do this to take the bowl out, but I just wanna show you. Inside there, you've got your main jet. As you can see, flathead screwdriver will remove that, and you can remove this main jet through this hole without actually taking the carburetor off the bike. So when it's sitting straight on the bike like this, you reach down here, pop that screw out, and then you can just stick a screwdriver in there, twist it, and it'll fall out into your hand if you wanna clean your main jet in a hurry on the side of the road. But for the time being, we're gonna now pop this off using one, two, three, four screws. I'm not gonna waste your time. I'll just take these out with movie magic right now. And there we go. So now we've got one, two, three, four screws out of the float bowl, and this can now be removed. And you just do that by giving it a little shake, pull it off. Now you've got your float bowl on this side in your carb body on this side. So we're gonna set this aside for now, and we're gonna talk about this section here. This is your main jet. It's removed with a large flathead screwdriver. This over here is your pilot jet, and it is removed with a small flathead screwdriver. You might be asking yourself, can I remove them both with the same screwdriver? And we are off to a bad start, because that is how you ruin your jets. Use a big screwdriver for this one, small screwdriver for this one so that you don't end up screwing up the threads on these guys. All right, so now we've got our main jet and our pilot jet removed. This right here is a gasket. This gasket can be reused, but you need to remove it delicately. So just gently lift up on the gasket, take that off, set that to the side. This is your car body here. We've taken out the main jet and the pilot jet. Now we're going to take a closer look at the jets themselves. So First thing you wanna do when you're looking at a jet is to see if you can see down the center of it. Now in this case, this is our main jet. The main jet is clear. You can see all the way through that hole with no obstructions. But for the sake of the video, let's now take a look at the pilot jet. So with the pilot jet, if I can get this into frame for you, you can see there's just barely, can you see some light through the center of that, but it's pretty plugged up. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna spray some carb clean down through this body of this carb, excuse me, of this jet, and we're gonna clear that hole up, and then we'll show you what it looks like. 
All right, guys, so like we said before, we can see through the main jet, but the pilot jet, we couldn't see through. So what I did, took a little bit of this carbon choke cleaner, now that you don't have to get this brand, there's a million people that make this stuff, carbon choke cleaner, sprayed it through this pilot jet, and if you look now, you can see the hole clear as day. So if you can't see through your jet, there is a problem and your jet needs to be cleaned out. Anytime you take a carburetor apart, you should take your main jet and your pilot jet, spray them out with carb clean every single time. The other thing you want to do while you've got these jets in hand is you want to take note of the number of the jet. So you can see here, this is an 072 on it for my main jet. This is a 72 main jet. And here on the pilot jet, oops, upside down, we've got a 29.5. See that there, 29.5. So because you're likely to forget those numbers. One habit I recommend is to just on the back side, this is the back side facing the motor of the carburetor, just write down your main jet size and your pilot jet size. Because if you ever have a carb issue later on and somebody asks you what kind of jets you're running, write them down. No one's ever gonna look at the back of your carb and this is gonna save you from having to take it apart. Now before we move on from the jets, I wanna just give you a baseline because it seems like people are always wondering what jet number should I run in my bike and people say, well, it depends on this, it depends on that, and to some degree, it does. But let me give you some quick start settings. I have an Evo Big Twin stock motor, and I'm running a 72 main with a 29.5 pilot. That's actually pretty close to what SNS recommends in their tuning guide as well. So what I've got is a 72 and a 29.5. If you have a Sportster, I would recommend you start with a 26.5 or a 28 on your pilot jet and a 66 on your main. Just to repeat those numbers, 26.5 to 28 on your pilot and a 66 on your main, if you have an 883 Sportster. Those are two of the most common bikes, the Big Twins and the Sporties. That's what I recommend that you would run. And that's the basics of the jets. So at this point, we're gonna move on to setting the float height. That's the next step you wanna do when you're cleaning up your carb and getting it ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these things back into their spots on the carb. And just in case you forget where they go, the main jet goes right up here in the center, spin that in and tighten it. And then the pilot jet goes with this flanged end, I guess you would call it, down, and the screw end up. Main jet, pilot jet, Tighten them down and you're all done with that. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying this week's video. In the meantime, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I'm putting out weekly videos and I don't want you to miss next week's video. So if you click that subscribe button, you will get notified every time a new video drops. Now, back to the video. So the next thing that you wanna do, because you hear this talked about all the time on the forums when people say, my carb's not running right, what should I do? You wanna check your float height. So we're gonna show you very quickly how to do that. This over here is your needle valve. You can see it moves up and down inside there. And don't worry, we're gonna take this off in a minute. I'll show you what it looks like. The way you check your float height is you push down on this side, and as you see, that brings your float up. See that? And then across from where you're pressing here, this right here is where I always check my float height, just to the left of this text over here, right there. And what you're looking for is from this gasket surface right here, see if we get this, this gasket surface here, to this float, you want there to be 1 8 to 3 16 of an inch. So I'm gonna get a ruler and I'll show you what mine's set at, and then I'll show you how to change it if yours is not set right. All right guys, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna check the float height. I'm gonna push down on this till the float is all the way up, and I'm gonna put this ruler right in here Let's see if I can move this in so you can see a little better. It's tricky for you to see it on camera, but we are actually just shy of an eighth. We're a little under an eighth on the float height. So what that means is we need to increase that float height. So to do that, we are gonna take a screwdriver and we're gonna pop out this screw holding the needle down. And after I get that screw out, I'll show you what it looks like underneath. All right, guys, so we know that the float on this one is too high. Basically, this float is coming up too high on this gasket surface. So we need the float to go 
down. So the way we do that, we took that screw out. You're going to go ahead and lift this guy right out. And I'll show you what it looks like. Put the carb, excuse me, put the float bowl down. And what you've got here is your needle valve right here. You can see that. This is a little rubber tip that seals off the gas flow once the float reaches the proper height. And then this is just a brass pin that's holding it in. So because, we're actually going to put this aside so that we don't lose this. Put this down. So because the float is coming up too high once it seats, we need to take this little tab, put that needle down, we need to take this little tab and we need to bend it back. We need to bend it this way because what that's going to do is that when this thing reaches all the way into the valve, we need this float to come down. So just very gently here, we're going to bend on that tab. And you can see we barely are moving it here. I'll show you one more time. We're just going to push just the slightest bit on this tab. All right, now that we've bent the tab a little bit, we'll bring you in close here. We're just going to take our needle, needle valve here. We're going to hook it back over this. We're going to take our little brass pin. We're going to pop that back through here. And now we're going to take the whole assembly and we're going to drop it back down into this little valve seat. And see, be careful here that it doesn't get hung up. You want that to go down in there. All right, so that's now reinstalled. You can push on this again, and this will show you. You'll basically put your screw back in. This little screw we've got over here goes back into here. We're going to tighten that screw back down, and then we're going to check the float height again. All right, guys, so now we've got all the components reinstalled, and we're going to check the float height again now that we've done the adjustment on this tab back here. So again, we're going to push down on this. We're going to come straight across to over here, and we are going to check the height between this surface and the float itself. So let's get the ruler out. And if you look now, we are right in between 1 8 and 3 16 and that's exactly where you want to be. That is the way that you set your float height. So now that the float height is set, your jets are clean. You're going to go ahead and put the gasket back onto the carb body. Then we'll put this bowl back onto the carb body. And then we can go ahead and talk about the factory settings. And you're done. That's all there is. All right, so let's get everything reassembled here. Make sure you've got your big screwdriver on your main jet. Go ahead and get that thing snugged down. And then make sure that your pilot jet with your little screwdriver is also snugged down. And then you go ahead, you take your gasket. You're going to drop your gasket back over everything. It always hangs up a little bit on the pilot jet. Needs a little push to get back down on there. But this is back seated. All right, guys, so we are now ready to reassemble. We've got our car body over here. We've got our float bowl over here. And we're just going to match up these one, two, three tubes with their slots on the float bowl. And you're just going to shimmy it back into place and close it down. So with that all squared away, we can go ahead and put our float bowl drain plug back in. We'll go ahead and just pop that on. And you remember the four screws that we took out earlier, three small screws and one long screw. The long screw, of course, goes in this slot right here. The one, two, three other screws will go back in here, and that'll be our float bowl back onto the carb. So again, with movie magic, we will just pop those all back in, and we're back. So we've got our four screws back in. We've got our drain plug back in. Now we've got the carburetor fully reassembled. So now we've gone over the jets, which ones to use, and also where they are. We've gone over the float height, which we set here in the float bowl, and now it's time to set the carb to the factory settings so you can get started riding. The first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna set the idle screw. The idle screw is very easy to set. 
It's right up here with your small screwdriver. You're just gonna twist this in very lightly. You can see I'm just using fingertips here until you feel the screw seat right there. And from that position, we're gonna come out one and one quarter turns. I like to do this in halves. So there's half, there's one, and then you do one more quarter, one and a quarter turns. Idle screw is now set back to factory settings. Next thing we're gonna do, we are gonna set the accelerator pump. So the accelerator pump, you can see is a screw with a little plate right here. So the way that we set the accelerator pump is we go just until this screw makes contact with that plate right there. Just beginning to touch on it and right as it begins to touch you want to come two turns out. So again we'll do it in halves, right? We'll go one half, one, one and a half, two. So that's our accelerator pump set. Two turns out from seated up against this piece. Now, so we've done the accelerator pump, we've done the mix screw. The last one we're going to set is the idle screw. So let me see if I can get you guys in here. You see this plate down here, the screw is touching that plate. So the way we set the accelerator, or excuse me, the way we set the idle screw is we go clockwise, let me back it out because I have it already set. So we'll back this up. You go in until it just touches that plate. Let's see if I can get an enricher in the way. Until it just starts to touch that plate, just like that. And then we're gonna come out, excuse me, we're gonna go in another half turn. So give it a spin, just like that. So. You can bring it until it lightly touches this plate, and then you go one half turn further down. And that's it. That is your idle speed adjusted, your idle mixture screw adjusted, and your accelerator pump adjusted. These are your factory settings for the Super E Carb. So between cleaning your jets, setting your float height, and now setting your three factory settings, you are ready to install your carburetor back on the bike it came off of, or if this is a brand new carb, this will get you in the ballpark to start making adjustments. One last tip that I'll give you at the end here. This right here is your vent hole. The stock carburetor air cleaner is the teardrop, and it does not interfere with this hole. Now, as you can see, on my bike, I had this velocity stack. This velocity stack also does not interfere with this hole. However, if you put on an air cleaner that covers up this hole, because you want to go with a cool air cleaner because you're a chopper guy, but you're not yet ready for the velocity stack, then if you end up covering that hole, you need to remove this plug down here. This is the auxiliary vent plug. So if this is covered, this needs to be uncovered. A lot of people have a lot of headaches with their carburetors and they end up throwing their Super E's away because they think the carburetor has an issue when in reality they've just got this hole plugged and no air can get in. So that covers it guys. There's your basic setup for your Super E carburetor. Let me know in the comments if there's any other tips you want to share with people. Feel free to drop them there so we can all learn from each other. And you are ready to rock and roll with the greatest carb on the planet. All right, guys, that is going to do it for us this week. Now you know everything you need to know to get your Super E ready for the new season. If you like these kind of how-to videos, I have another video I shot a few weeks back about converting your bike to points. I'll throw a link to that up over here. Remember to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next week.